So we'll continue our lectures on the eigenvalue problem. We started yesterday. We defined the eigenvalue problem, showed how to use determinants to find the eigenvalues and then solve for eigenvectors. The tutorial will continue the same problem with some more examples, more some application kind of examples. So uh, first we come to this problem, uh, characteristic roots of transpose matrix. So we know that the uh, determinant of transpose matrix is same as the determinant of the given matrix. So correspondingly, we have this result that the eigenvalues of a transpose matrix are same as that for the given matrix. A uh, proof is very uh, straightforward. The characteristic polynomial of the transpose matrix, just trivial manipulations, and you find that it is same as that for the given matrix. So determinant of transpose matrix minus lambda times identity, and then you write it the trivial manipulation as transpose of a minus lambda times identity is determinant. And then since we know that matrix uh, determinant of a transpose matrix is same as the determinant of the matrix, so we find that the characteristic polynomials are same. So all the eigenvalues are same with repeated same number of times. However, the eigenvectors will not be same. So that will change. To illustrate this, uh, we give an example, we will repeat an example which was given long back about this particular matrix, which was a matrix about how uh, the usage of land uses changes and the probabilities over five years, industrial to residential, residential to in, uh, what is that, uh, commercial, etc., etc., that matrix. And I uh, made a remark in the end that if this is the distribution, then um, uh, use will not change at all. Use will not change, meaning you will, you, uh, the usage will change, but the dynamics is such that you will get back to the same proportions. So that uh, problem, I promise that we'll show how to solve such problems. So today we'll solve that problem. How to find uh, u such that the land usage does not change. So the problem is equivalent to the eigenvalue problem. A A x is equal to lambda x. Here b transpose u transpose is equal to u transpose. Here lambda is of course one. Okay. So we have to know whether 1 is an eigenvalue or not first of all. So by an observation, uh, we note that this, uh, there is an eigenvector 1, 1, 1 for the given matrix B, which does not change under influence of B. So it means at least B has eigenvalue 1. Of course, this can also be checked by taking determinants, okay? but it is another way. You can always uh, subtract identity and see whether the determinant becomes 0 or not. That will confirm that 1 is an eigenvalue. But here is a shortcut method for stochastic matrices. It is for, it, this works for all stochastic matrices. So this 1, 1, 1 is, uh, is not uh, is unchanged under B. So B has eigenvalue 1. And therefore, by a previous uh, observation, a so-called theorem, B transpose will also have eigenvalue 1. So we can solve for the eigenvector because you already know there is an eigenvalue 1. So B transpose also has eigenvalue 1. So we can solve, we can expect a non-trivial solution for this corresponding eigenvalue equation. B transpose minus identity V equal to 0 directly. And then V will become U transpose. So solve for V, then V is equal to U transpose and therefore of course U is equal to B transpose. Okay. So this is B transpose minus identity acting on X, Y, Z vector and equal to 0, 0, 0. So we can just directly do by row, row reductions. That's what we'll do. So this is a homogeneous system for B transpose after subtracting identity matrix from that. So uh, here you can see the diagonal entries are min point 0.8 minus 1, point 0.7 minus 1, point 0.9 minus 1. But transpose has same eigen uh, has same diagonal entries as the original matrix. So that's not a problem. Other entries don't change. Because only diagonal entries change. So we do our elementary row operations or sometimes also called Gauss elimination method, GEA. And sometimes multiplying second row by minus 1 and adding to the third row. So that will clear at least 1, 0 from the bottom row. I clear uh, first, first entry of the bottom row. 
then uh, adding two times uh, second row to the first row uh, makes the first entry of the first row 0 etc then you can interchange to make clear the first column so interchange 1 and 2 it, it uh, clears the first column so you can go to second column second and third column so now you can you can easily see that how third row gets cleared immediately because it's just a multiple of the second row so you add a second row to the third row and you get the row h1 form so we can see that there are only two pivots so rank is 2 nullity is 1 so there has to be a solution non zero solution so we can get 0.2 z 0.4 z z so the z i have taken as free variable because the third column is without pivot so we have taken z corresponding variable z as a free variable uh, so you see z is free y is equal to 2 by 5 z and x equal to um, 1 by 5 z something a, a problem asks for unit eigenvector so we can we take z to be something like this either plus 5 by root 30 or minus to get unit eigenvector but sometimes if we are go to old problem then what we want is some of the entries to, should be 100 where you want percentage then that will give some other value of z so in the old problem you wanted percentages then you put so that some of the entry that is what is 1.6 z is equal to 100 so z is equal to 100 by 1.6 so yeah, require depending on the requirement so any multiple of eigenvector is eigenvector here the question asks for unit eigenvector so we have taken eigenvector such as sum of the square is equal to 1 so that gives that so depend in all our multiples of 0 0.2 0 0.41 so this solves that problem and the u is called equilibrium point because repeated application of b leaves it unchanged u u b will be u then u b b will be u etc is this we have already seen before when we did that particular problem so another example, uh, say a coupled system of there are two strings, uh, two springs, two springs are attached in series of ideal springs, and you can write uh, with some uh, different spring constants. I think five and two, perhaps that's what it looks like. Five is above, two is below. So we want to uh, study the vib vibrations of this system, coupled system. So for single spring, we know it's simple harmonic. But for a coupled system, it becomes complicated. So find the solution vector. So how do we solve this problem? Is take the coefficient matrix uh, minus five two two minus that is a coefficient matrix, and then we can rewrite the equation as y double dash equal to a y the same equation where y is now the vector y one y two. So since we are expecting it to be some kind of oscillating system so we try an oscillatory vector as a solution where uh, e power i omega t is a uh, oscillating part and x is a constant vector this is a, we are trying a solution of this kind okay yeah, it may not work also we don't know so you substitute in the eigenvalue problem that is the equation this equation uh, yeah you substitute here so y double dash will become minus omega square e power i omega t and a y is e, a e power i omega t times x so you will get an after cancelling that scalar i e power i omega t you can cancel it is always non zero you will get this problem so we are assuming x to be having constant entries okay all right so what is this is an eigenvalue problem with eigenvalue minus omega square and we have to find eigenvector x uh, which that will solve the problem so we have to do our routine work first find eigenvalue then find eigenvectors etc so you look at the matrix a minus 5 this one this matrix and we just subtract lambda from the diagonal and take determinant it's a 2 by 2 so it's very easy and you can see that the eigenvalues are uh, minus 6 and minus 1 for a so eigenvalues for a are minus 1 and minus 6 and our problem has got minus omega square so minus omega square equals minus 1 and minus 6 which means omega square is 1 and 6 and possible values for omega are plus minus 1 plus minus root 6 so i'll write here if you want
right so in the problem i again will use minus omega square so we get the corresponding eigen vectors you can compute now for eigen value 1 and eigen value 6 you can compute eigen vectors by the same process by 2 by 2 it is trivial huh? because as soon as you put uh, correct lambda in 2 by 2 matrix immediately the two rows will become proportional so it is completely trivial that's the only way two vectors become linearly independent by becoming proportional so uh, in a, in a singular in a matrix which has non zero nullity if it is 2 by 2 rows have to be linearly independent and there are only two rows they have to be multiple of each other so you just uh, for example here if you try minus 1 so subtract minus 1 from here and minus 1 from here what will become uh, <laughs> plus 1 so minus 4 and uh, minus 1 and that is 2 and 2 so you see when you immediately say they become proportional so row row reduction is trivial Okay, see, see that immediately the first row is minus 2 times the second row. So, row direction is a triviality for 2 by 2. So, therefore, solving also is equally trivial. So, uh, corresponding eigenvectors for eigenvalue 1 will be 1, 2 and for 6 it will be 2 minus. Of course, you can take any non-zero multiple also. This is, these are the smallest figures in integers which I, I can find. If, if, if you want, you if you like, you can take 2, 4 or you can take pi 2 pi ok anything you want it should be multiple of 1 2 similarly second one 2 minus 1 that also you can take any multiple you want all right we keep it simple that is all. So, we, so this gives our uh, four complex solution because omega will be plus minus 1 plus minus root 6. So, 1 2 times e power plus minus i t 2 minus 1. So, for 1 2 uh, eigen value is uh, Om, uh, 1 and therefore omega is plus 1 and minus 1 and uh, solution is i omega t. So, plus i t and minus i t that is for i first eigen vector and for second eigen vector it is plus minus i root 6 t. Yes. Uh, so we solve the you do not know how to find eigen vector you have done it so many times. Okay. So, let us go back. So, we subtract the eigen value from the matrix first. I have written here for example if you subtract eigenvalue minus 1 you will get this matrix then you have to solve for this x y is equal to 0 0 ok and I told you there is not a unique solution eh? any multiple will also be solution because it anything in it describes a null space null space is a vector space. So, that is how you get 1 2 and similarly try the minus 6 so, you will get what is I do not know plus 1 and uh, plus 4. So, again you can see they become proportional then again solve for x y then you will get this 2 minus 1 you may some of you may get minus 2 1 also that is all correct. Huh? So, uh, you can combine these solutions you will get uh, this uh, real solution half cos t half sin t and these solutions are all independent of each other whatever it means. And therefore, general solution can write a combination it's some scalar a times first solution plus scalar b times second solution plus some scalar c times third solution plus some scalar d times fourth solution that will be general solution. And why we combine because we have to observe that the equation we got where a is a matrix of constants this equation is a linear equation it is true even if a is not a matrix of constants. This is a linear equation. What it means is, if uh, if you can find two solutions, say uh, v and w, we satisfy this uh, equation. So two vector solutions, if you can find v and w, we satisfy this equation. Then v plus w will automatically satisfy this equation. And also constant time v will also. So a set of solutions is all, all like a null space. Huh? So, set of solution is a vector space in the, in the abstract sense. We will come to it of course in the last week. So, all linear combination will also be solution. These are the basic solutions. These are the so called pure harmonics, pure frequencies, whatever it is, and then general solution will be combination of these. So, these are general solution. And the space of solution 
we have already discussed it is an abstract vector space. What is the dimension of this vector space? There are only two and two columns, huh? so there are only two columns, but still uh, answer is correct. There are four R pre constants involved, so it is a four dimensional vector space and we can see a basis also which is given there are four vectors which are basis. But this is a this is solution set is a trajectory in R2 okay. Solution set T is a T is a variable like time. So, a solution set is a trajectory in R2 and such trajectories form a vector spaces we have not discussed. We have only discussed uh, columns or rows where entries are constants. Here entries are not constant they are changing. So, that is why and it still behaves like vector space. So, when we try to unify solutions coming from different parts of mathematics and physics and science, then we get this idea of abstract vector space which we will see probably in the last week only. Then we can say yeah it is a vector space. So, this is uh, solving eigenvalue problem we can give us summarize it. So, first thing is given a square matrix find the characteristic polynomial and the roots that is characteristic polynomial is find by uh, subtracting an unknown uh, lambda and taking determinant. Then for each eigenvalue you find corresponding eigenvectors by, result, by solving the resulting uh, singular singular meaning uh, nullity is positive nullity is non zero positive ok. Uh, the matrix is non invertible singular means non invertible. So, non invertible homogeneous mean system. So, there are some remarks. So, for if lambda is a real correct suppose yes, we are usually will be taking into account a real matrix, but uh, we know that the roots can be complex. So, if lambda is a real eigenvalue then you have a real solution space that is null space of a minus lambda that is called that will be denoted by E lambda that is a standard notation it is called lambda eigen space of A. Sometimes one put E lambda bracket A also and a vector space vector subspace of Rn it is called a lambda eigen space. If lambda is complex then eigen vectors will be forced forcibly in a column of a column of complex numbers that is forced we cannot have A is a real matrix the eigen value is uh, complex then the uh, vector the eigen vectors will be complex we, you cannot find a real eigen vector. So, uh, we can look at a simple example. This is a real matrix. What are its eigenvalues? So, uh, what are the eigenvalues? And when it acts on any vector x, y in the plane, you cannot expect a proportional vector because actually the range vector is uh, the same vector x, y turned by 90 degree actually. This same the vector x itself x, y uh, vector given vector. So, every vector turns by 90 degrees, so you cannot expect a any vector to remain proportional to itself. So, no, you cannot have any real eigenvector, but uh, since any anyway, eigenvalues are complex. So, but if you want if you allow complex eigenvectors, then uh, you will have I believe 1 i and 1 minus i. These are I think uh, complex eigenvectors. This is I think for minus i. Plus I think so minus minus i plus 1 yeah I think it is correct. So, let us verify. Ok. 
ओके जा सो दिस इज फॉर माइनस आई एसो अदर वन इज फॉर प्लस आई ओके सो इफ दैट इफ मैट्रिक्स इज रियल एंड आइगन वैल्यू इज कॉम्प्लेक्स देन आइगन वेक्टर वैल्यू इज कॉम्प्लेक्स बट इफ द मैट्रिक्स इज कॉम्प्लेक्स एंड आइगन वैल्यू इज रियल देन देयर मे बी a lucky situation where eigen value eigen vector may also be real okay that is possible if a has odd size then at least one eigen value will be real because you will have an odd degree polynomial we have discussed that degree of the polynomial a characteristic polynomial is the size of the matrix n so if uh, size is odd then there will be an odd a uh, polynomial will be of odd degree with real co uh, real coefficients and therefore at least one zero will be there which is real Because you know, odd degree polynomial they go from minus infinity to plus infinity, whereas the variable goes from minus infinity. So it has to cross at least once x-axis. So there will be at least one zero. Huh? Odd size. Yeah, the, there will be the the characteristic polynomial will be of odd degree, and an odd degree polynomial takes all values from minus infinity to plus infinity, and by intermediate value property, somewhere it has to take zero also. And if you want to be more precise, <laughs> zero will be uh, will be taken at least odd number of times if you count with multiplicity. Okay, so I th I think that should be enough for today. There is nothing more.